What's good, R&B squad? This is Heart of Ruth. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you are new to this family, we don't believe that you're here by accident. Welcome. We're happy to have you, and Jesus is, of course, always happier. It's a bit noisy out here, guys. It's usually noisy on Saturdays. I am going to try my best to raise my voice over the noise. However, if it gets to be too much, turn on the closed captioning. There is a lot in this word, and a lot of you are going to be able to benefit from it because there are so many different parts. Now, the Lord overloaded me with messages between the period of last night and this morning. So I'm going to do my best to deliver each message. For some of you, more than one message is going to be for you. For others of you, it's going to be just one message. Y'all know how we do it here. Eat the meat, spit out the bone. Take what's for you, leave the rest. I'm going to go through my notes and I'm going to try to get everything in. Hopefully I can get everything in in this one message. If not, I'm going to have to do a follow-up message. So for someone, you have been worried about your health. You've recently prayed concerning your health. It's stuff that's going on in your body that you're not sure about. You don't feel well sometimes. There are times when you may be experiencing pains in certain parts of your body. You're wondering what's going on. And you're supposed to go and get an overall checkup. You know that that's something that you have to do. But at the same time, you're worried as to what the results are going to say. The Lord led me to Isaiah 58 verse 8 on your behalf. Then your salvation will come like the dawn, and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. And I'm going to read that from the King James Version as well. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. And I read it again from the King James Version, because that version mentions your health. So this is God's way of saying to you for whom this is for, don't worry. He's got your health covered. You're you're safe. You're healthy. He's declared you healthy. So go ahead and get your full checkup. Make your doctor's appointment to get your full checkup. It is going to come back with a clean bill of health. You're good, okay? The devil is a liar. Whatever has been going on, whatever you think you've been feeling in your body, that's just the enemy trying to make you worry unnecessarily. You are healthy. Okay, so that is for one person. For somebody else... The Lord led me to John chapter 4. You need to read John chapter 4. And overall, the message there is that you have been accused of something or your being, fingers are being pointed at you. People are condemning you in a sense because of something that they're saying that you did or maybe something that you actually did. Well, God is saying that he's already forgiven you for it and he's declared you innocent. And these people who are pointing their fingers at you, not only is he going to cause them to stop, but he is going to make them feel guilty about their own dirty laundry because they're sitting up on this on, on this pedestal acting as though they're all righteous and they're this beacon of honesty and righteousness, when in reality, they've done worse things than you. So he's saying that he's going to make them feel guilty about their own misdeeds. He is going to expose their misdeeds. And at the same time, he has declared you innocent. Read John chapter 4. Actually, that is John chapter 8. I'm sorry. It's John chapter 8. It's going to be in the description box so that you can go back and and just check for the, the actual scripture. And you can take it from there and read it. Let me see what else I have here. Okay. So for somebody else, the Lord led me to Joshua chapter 7, and particularly this verse, Joshua chapter 7, verse 7, and then Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. And for whom this part is for, you need to read Joshua chapter 7 in its entirety. Now, in Joshua chapter 7, there was an accursed thing among the Israelites. And because there was an accursed thing around them, among them, everything around them started to fall apart. So how that translates to you for whom this is for, and make sure that you read Joshua chapter 7. There is someone around you, someone or something around you that you need to get rid of. Okay? This thing 
is not of God or this person is in disobedience to God and needs to be cut off from you before you proceed to your promised land. They're blocking you. Their presence or the presence of this thing that is not of God is blocking you from entering into your promised land. And this is a timely word because Passover is two days from now. So for whom that part of the word is for, consecrate yourself. Find out from God. Go sit before God. Find out what it is that is in your midst that is holding you back from entering into your promised land because I'm, it's definitely something. It's not you. It is not you. Notice in Joshua chapter 7, it wasn't all of the Israelites. It turned out it was just one man. One man had done wrong. And because of that, the whole group of people, all of the Israelites were affected by his wrongdoing. And they needed to cut him off before they could proceed. It's the same thing with you. You have not done anything wrong. You're in obedience, but there is something in your midst or someone who's either the thing is either not of God or the person is in dis disobedience to God. And because of that, it's hindering you from making progress to where God wants you to be. You need to cut that person off or you need to cut that thing off. Let me see what else I've got here. Oh, okay, so this part of the message is going to be particularly long. It came from a dream that I had. So I'm going to get right into the dream and then into the interpretation. And the Lord gave me a couple of scriptures to go along with it. So in this dream, this gentleman came to visit this woman. And he was eating. And while he was eating, she decided that she was going to go and take a shower and make herself decent to sit and chat with him. Now, after he had completed the meal and she took the dishes to the sink and put it there and they proceeded to talk, he started to tell her that he would sit there with her and be her husband, that he would occupy that space with her and be her husband. That's what he told her. And I remember those words distinctly. I don't remember the exact conversation, exactly what they were talking about, but I do remember that part. I remember him saying to her, he's going to sit with her and be her husband. And then he had the Bible open. And as I looked at the Bible that he had open that was sitting there next to him, I saw Isaiah chapter 54. That was the chapter that the Bible was open to. And I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 54. And I'm going to read part of that chapter for you. And then I'm going to explain why God took me there. Just let me pull it up here. Okay, so I'm reading from the New King James Version. A perpetual covenant of peace. Sing, O barren woman. You who have not borne children, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabit it. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood any more. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, you afflicted, 
one tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all of your walls of precious stones, and all your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall not be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror for it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Okay, and I'm going to stop there. But for whom that is for, please read that chapter. That is, again, Isaiah chapter 54 in its entirety. So now, there's two hidden gems in that message. First of all, there is the gentleman saying to this woman, he finished eating, and that's a clue for somebody. And while he was eating, this lady was washing up. She was preparing to sit with him. She was beautifying herself to sit with him and have a conversation. And then when they got to talking, he told her he's going to sit with her and he's going to be her husband. He will sit with her as her husband. And then the Bible that he had near him was open to Isaiah chapter 54. So the Lord is saying to you that you prayed for a man for whom this is for. You prayed for a man who would love you the way Christ loves the church. And all this time, your maker has been your husband. God has been taking care of you. God has been your provider. God has been your protector. And even though you are totally satisfied in your relationship with God, you do want to be married. You do want to have a family. So the Lord is saying to you, that this is a time for singing. This is a time for celebration because he's heard you and he has sent you that husband, that husband that is going to love you the way Christ loves the church. And this man is coming forward swiftly. He's coming forward to state his intentions. Now, for some of you, you're actually going to receive a visit from this person. You already know who your husband to be is. You're going to receive a visit from this person and during the visit, he is going to propose. For others of you, it's just a visit. Maybe you're in separation and this man is just coming to you to talk to you and let you know his intentions. But for others of you, it's going to go from zero to 100 real quick. He is going to visit you and propose when he visits. But the Lord is saying that he has been your provider and your protector and your husband all this time. And now he is going to hand you over to his son, knowing that this man is going to love you the way Christ loves the church, knowing that this is an Ephesians chapter five man. And I thought that that was so beautiful. Now, remember that, that what was what else was hidden in there, the hidden clue. The man was eating. The woman went to take a shower to make herself presentable for him. When he was done eating, they had the conversation. I love the Lord. I love how the Lord displays things so plainly so that he can let me know what he's talking about, okay? He led me to Ruth 3.3. 3. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. For some of you, this is going to be look like a dinner date. Maybe this person is going to invite you over and cook for you. Or maybe you're going to cook something up for them when they come over. Either way, some of you are going to share a meal with this person. And then the conversation is going to come up about marriage during or after the meal. Either way, get yourself ready, prepare yourself, because this, this guy is coming. And if you're a man listening to this, just know that you're, that you're being led by the Holy Spirit. If you are feeling right now that this is the time for you to go far, that this is the time for you to speak with this woman and state your intentions to her, just know that you're being led by the Holy Spirit, especially if he's been showing you signs. And this is just coming as additional confirmation to you. So let me see if I have anything else here. Oh, right. So for the person who is going to get engaged, the Lord was very adamant about you staying quiet about it. This is not something, yes, it's going to be a happy time, but this is not something that you need to go and tell to everybody. You need to be quiet about it. The Lord said that twice, that you need to sit in silence and you, you cannot share this information with any and every. As a matter of fact, don't tell nobody until the Lord tells you it's okay to say something. For now, just be quiet about it. Just celebrate with the Lord and your fiance. And that's it. Is there anything else? Let me see. Oh, for someone, your person has been trying to reach out to you and they have been speaking with your family 
and your family has not been telling you that this person is reaching out. So they've been concealing the fact that this person is trying to reach out and the ones who are concealing it, their intention is to keep the two of you apart, but you're going to come together anyway. Because at the end of the day, God is orchestrating the entire thing. So there's nobody who can really block y'all from communicating. So I believe that that was it. I hope that for those of you listening, that you found confirmation in here for something that you've been praying about. I love you guys. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.